Defense attorney Ted Williams is a former D.C. homicide detective and a Fox News contributor. Ted, thanks so much for being with us today. And yes, it's been set at $5 million now, but it was previously set at $1,000, and that allowed him to get out and kill these people. What needs to be done here about bail reform? You know, Ben, uh, let me just say this, Benjamin. Uh, I would like to first offer my deepest, deepest condolences to all of the victims out there in Waukesha, Wisconsin. And I'd like to just have one person, we need to say the name of Jeff Jackson Sparks. Jackson Sparks was the sixth victim that was killed out there. His brother, Tucker Sparks, is hanging on for his life right now. And all at the result of a bottom feeder getting out of jail on a $1,000 bond. A person who had a 50-page uh, rap sheet, sex offenses, assault and battery, drug charges, and they allowed and permitted this person to walk the face of the earth. I am deeply troubled. I am deeply concerned. And what we need to do is reflect and take another look at this so-called bail reform in this country and who is permitted to get bail, Benjamin. Ted, this is Dana. I wanted to read to you from this House Oversight Committee letter just yesterday, kind of stunning timing. We have grave concerns that excessive bail amounts are leading to unnecessary pretrial detention and contributing to a humanitarian crisis in the New York City's jail system. If these conditions are not addressed, federal intervention may be necessary to protect detainees from additional harm. Look, I'll grant you, something needs to be done about Rikers. But here's Dermot Shea, of course, the police commissioner. He says, I think we're at about 5,400 inmates in Rikers Island. It was almost 6,100 about a month and a half ago, and all of these things play into what we're seeing on the street. And just for some examples, some repeat offenders. Uh, Isis Thomas attacked police officer in October, stabbed another officer in 2008, attacked, and then you have John Chappell attacking someone in a subway, had 67 previous arrests in New York City dating back to 1982. Um, and then, of course, we have this other one where a woman was pushed onto an oncoming subway train on October 3rd, and months earlier, assaulted on a Harlem train. So you can draw a line as to the policy of letting people out too early to additional crimes being committed. You, you know, Dana, um, it's like we should just open the jail cells and let any and everybody out. That's ridiculous. We have violent criminals out here who are killing people who are harming and maiming and injuring citizens in this country. You know, if you want to look at bail reform and you want to look at nonviolent criminals, well, I don't have a problem with that. But when we just take uh, the bathwater and we throw everyone out uh, into these various metropolitan cities, all we are doing is creating havoc for ourselves. And an excellent example of that is what happened there in Waukesha, Wisconsin. Ted, I want to get your views very quickly on uh, the number of homicides in D.C. It's just hit 200 this year. I know you were a former D.C. homicide detective yourself, but this is a trend that continues. It has not been at that level since 2003, and it's a problem occurring in other Democratic-run cities, too. And if we just look at some of the stats, for example, St. Petersburg, Florida, has seen a 129 percent increase. You know, look at Austin, Texas, 81 percent. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 20 percent. I mean, the list goes on. What do you make of that? Benjamin, what's happening is just the fact that the criminals are winning. They're taking over our major metropolitan cities. And it's because we don't allow or permit police officers to do the job that we hire them to do. We're in this crazy defund the police movement at this immediate time. That is a tragedy. We are more concerned about the rights of the criminals than we are of the law-abiding citizens in these various communities. We need to wake up uh, before it is too late. And I'm all very, very concerned about that, Benjamin, right now. Uh, the criminals are winning. Please, I implore, 
these city officials to wake up, get this defunding the police crap off of your plate, start helping and looking and, 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 yeah. and, and feeling that you want to help the law-abiding citizens in these communities to remain safe. That's what we call for. We want law and order in our communities. And that is not what's happening, Benjamin and Dana, in our communities yeah. right now. We have criminals who we are more concerned about than law-abiding citizens, and that's terribly yeah. unfortunate. We hear your passion indeed, Ted. Thank you yeah, so much. Ted, thank you, sir.